Good day, beloved. Peace be with you. I welcome you to another edition of Weekly Cat Kisses with Father January on Father January YouTube channel. Last week, we learned about man's desire for God. And we learned so many things about the desire for God. About the fact that we are created by God and we move towards Him and we end in Him. Indeed, our souls will be restless until they find rest in God. And we look at how we can know God. And we said the two ways to know God is through the world or the creation and through the human reason. And indeed, we came to the fact that through human reason, we can come to know God because He is in all that He has created. And every creature of God has a resemblance of God. And so through the principles of truth, of beauty, and of perfection, which is present in the things He has created, we can come to know God. And finally, we also spoke about how to talk about God. How do we speak about Him? That we can speak about Him using the human language. And this human language is limited because we are humans and God is a spirit. And also about the fact that we can do that through the knowledge. And of course, our knowledge is also limited. And so my dear friends, today we are looking at part one, the profession of faith. We are looking at chapter two and part one, article one. Today, the topic is God comes to meet man. God comes to meet man. And this session is contained in Numbers 50 to 73. 50 to 73, when you take your catechism of the Catholic Church. Now, let me read what number 50 has to say. By natural reason, man can know God with certainty on the basis of his works. But there is another order of knowledge which man cannot possibly arrive at by his own powers, the order of divine revelation. Through an utterly free decision, God has revealed himself and given himself to man. Thus, he does by revealing the mystery, the plan of loving goodness formed from all eternity in Christ for the benefit of all men. God has fully revealed this plan by sending us his beloved son, our Lord Jesus Christ and the Holy Spirit. Today, basically what we are looking at is the revelation of God. And so we can know God by the works of man, by the world and our knowledge. But the other thing we can also do is through revelation. In this revelation, it is God who takes the decision to make himself known to man. And we, only by the help and power of the Holy Spirit, do we come to know and accept this revelation. Under today's topic, we shall be looking at God reveals his plan of loving goodness. We shall also look at the stages of revelation. What are the stages of revelation? Then finally, we shall end with Christ Jesus, mediator and fullness of revelation. Now, now let's look at God reveals his plan of loving goodness. God, who is God and lives in an unapproachable light, reveals himself to us, first and foremost, through the things that he has created. It is he who does that through his son, our Lord Jesus Christ. And he speaks to us through the created order. Through the things that we see around us, God makes himself known to us. The divine plan of revelation is realized simultaneously by deeds and words, which are intrinsically bound up with each other and shed light on each other. So by deeds and by words, God makes himself known. Through the things he has created and through his own words in scripture, we get to know God. And these two are bound together according to Revelation. So anybody who wants to know God 
And if God wants to reveal himself to us, he does that in two ways. In deeds and in words. And we cannot know God except he reveals himself to us. Now let's look at the stages of revelation. The stages in which God used to reveal himself to man. The first stage we can consider is in the Garden of Eden. God reveals himself to our first parents, Adam and Eve. And he showed them who he is as God. This did not come to an end after they sinned. No. God continued to reveal himself. God who created throughout the world or created through the word, Jesus Christ, reveals himself to us through Adam and Eve. And when that was done, after the sin of Adam and Eve, then God made a covenant with Noah and revealed himself to Noah and made a promise to Noah not to destroy the world with water again. After that revelation, then God now chooses Abraham, our father in faith, and he makes another covenant with Abraham. He promises Abraham a child. He promises Abraham to be the father of nations. And this is how God reveals himself. And God went ahead to choose a people and makes them a nation. And out of that nation is to come his son, our Lord Jesus Christ. And so God begins to form a people through Jacob who gave birth to the 12 sons and becomes Israel. And Israel becomes a nation. And they enter into exile. And God raises Moses. And Moses goes to, to deliver these people out of bondage. And he sends them to the promised land. And as if that was all, God, in his own wisdom, raises patriarchs. He raises prophets. He raises the judges. And through these people, God reveals himself to his own chosen people so that he can reach out to the whole world. The perfection of all his revelation is in the Virgin Mary, who bore the Son of God the one to reveal the Father to us more perfectly. And so God, through the family of Israel, reveals himself and shows himself to all of us. Let's look at the third part. Jesus Christ, mediator and fullness of all revelation. In Hebrews chapter 1, verse 1 to 2, we read, in many and various ways, God spoke of old to our fathers by the prophets. But in these last days, he has spoken to us by a son, Christ, the son of God made man. Now he is the father's choice, perfect and unsurpassable word through whom we come to know the father. It is through Jesus that revelation is made perfect. It is only in Jesus that revelation is made complete. And in fact, the Catechism teaches us that beyond Jesus, there is no further revelation. Now let's read Catechism of the Catholic Church number 66, which says, The Christian economy, therefore, since it is the new and definitive covenant, will never pass away. And no new public revelation is to be expected before the glorious manifestation of our Lord Jesus Christ. Yet, even if revelation is already complete, it has not been made completely explicit. It remains for Christian faith gradually to grasp its full significance over the course of the century. This is the teaching of the church. That the revelation publicly has come to an end. Until that day when Christ will come, we do not expect another public revelation of God. The fullness of God's revelation is in Jesus. He who is the way, he who is the truth, and he who is the life. He comes to show us the Father. 
in him we see the father in him we see god in him we see the nature of god in him we see who god truly is my dear friends this is what the catechism of the catholic church teaches us i guess your mind is refreshed about something you have learned so many years ago and perhaps have not read in years i guess you remember certain things now in summary by love god has revealed himself and given himself to men he has thus provided the definitive super abundant answer to the questions that man asks himself about the meaning and the purpose of life it is all in god god has revealed himself to man by gradually communicating his own mystery in deeds and in words let us not forget that god reveals himself to us in his deeds and in his word his word our lord jesus christ beyond the witness to himself that god gives in created things he manifested himself to our first parents adam and eve spoke to them and after the fall promised them salvation and offered them his covenant god has revealed himself fully by sending his own son in whom he has established his covenant forever the son is his father's definitive word so there will be no further revelation after him this is what the church teaches my name is father january like our videos share this video with your friends other catholics and even non-catholics if you want to know more about the church it is weekly catechesis see you another time god bless you peace and joy